esteemed guests, dear colleagues, students, and my dear friends. On behalf of the Department of Sociology, Jesus and Mary College, it is my privilege to welcome you all at this seminar on Environment and Sociology Emerging Trends. A hearty thanks to all who are present here today, a special thanks to our principal for enabling to host this event, and to our guests for taking out time for this from their very busy schedules. Uh, may I also just request everyone to put their phones on silence? Thank you. At the very beginning, something has to be said about the significance of the seminar. At the very beginning, it has to be mentioned that there are certain things we cannot necessarily hope to achieve from the seminar. For instance, at the end of the seminar, we may not come up with disconcerting statistics about the environment. We may also not be able to come up with solutions or measures involved in saving the environment. And most certainly, we will not be able to suggest an alternative planet to hold our next seminar. However, we have assembled here today to discuss, debate, and develop a social scientific thinking about environment. We intend to take the debate beyond numbers and underline the social politics of environmental relations. We wish to address the plurality of perceptions with regard to the meanings of environment and environmental concerns. And most importantly, through this two-day seminar, we wish to raise theoretical and methodological questions in the study of environmental issues. With no further delay then, I call upon our principal, Sister Marina John, to inaugurate the seminar by lighting the ceremonial lamp and to say a few words on this occasion. Uh, sure, uh, the ceremonial lamp will be lit by our keynote uh, speaker, Professor Oman, and our principal, Sister Marina John, and Professor Sabesachi, and Dr. Taisha Ibrahim. <laughs> and Ms. Tanushki Raha as well. Perhaps the TIC of Sociology Department also could also join me. Principal Sister Marina John. Distinguished guests, teachers, students, and participants from other colleges. A very good morning to all of you present here today, and I warmly welcome you on the occasion of the inauguration of the two-day UGC National Seminar 
organized by the Department of Sociology on Environment Issues. Jesus and Mary College is committed towards its social responsibilities and has been sensitizing its students towards being responsible citizens. We all are aware of the pertinent issues related to our environment. However, we need to understand that environmental problems have a social implication as well. As responsible scholars and as members of this society, we must address these issues from all perspectives. The seminar is one step forward, the direction of an informed intervention towards the resolution of the problems concerning our environment. Comprehensive knowledge about a problem and awareness create pathways for effective action at a larger scale. With this conviction, we have among us today some of the most learned scholars to share their insights on the matters related to environment. It's a pleasure to have among us an internationally distinguished sociologist, Professor T.K. Uman, as the keynote speaker for this seminar. He is one of the first Asians to be the president of the International Sociological Association and is currently Professor Emeritus at the Center for the Study of Social Systems, JNU. I extend a warm welcome to Professor Uman and the distinguished scholars present here for with us today and tomorrow. I wish you all a very enlightening and inspiring engagement with emerging trends in environment issues. My sincere appreciation and hearty congratulations to Ms. Tanushri Raha and her team of teachers and students of sociology department for the efforts in organizing this event. Thank you and God bless each one of you with his grace and benign presence. God bless. Sister, for your good wishes, we truly appreciate your support in the organization of this event. Now, for our very first session of the day, our keynote lecture, it is my honor and privilege to welcome amongst us none other than Professor T.K. Oman. Currently positioned as Professor Emeritus at the CSSS JNU, Professor Umur was awarded the Padma Bhushan in 2008 for his contribution to the field of education in India. He completed his MA and PhD in Sociology from Pune University and began his teaching career at the Delhi School of Social Work before moving on to CSSS JNU as a professor. Professor Uman has served as visiting faculty to several universities in Europe and North America and is regarded as an exemplary teacher by those who have been fortunate enough to be taught by him. He was elected as president of International Sociological Association as well as the Indian Sociological Society and has been editorially associated with numerous national and international journals. Professor Uman has a repertoire of books under his authorship several of which are taught to undergraduate and postgraduate students in the universities across India. His recent book, Social Inclusion in Independent India, has received much acclaim and scholarly attention. Professor Uman has held the chairmanship of Ford Foundation and has also served as a member of the Prime Minister's high-level Sarcher Committee. It is indeed an honor to invite him on the stage to deliver the keynote lecture for the seminar. Professor T.K. Uman. Friends, uh, I am not very used to talk to people in an empty hall, but it is half empty only. Okay? <laughs> but more importantly, I feel very lonely on the stage alone. Uh, I, I hope I will recover gradually from my predicament. The topic is an extremely challenging one. 
It is titled Environment in Sociology, Emerging Trends. Now, since environment and ecology are often interchangeably used, let me start with a terminological clarification. Environment is the surroundings or conditions in which a person, animal, or plant lives or operates. It is a physical sphere. Similarly, ecology is the branch of biology concerned with the relations of organizations, that is, humans, uh, organisms, that is, humans with other animals, to one another and to their surroundings. In sociology, both environmental sociology and ecological sociology are interchangeably used, and please keep that in mind. Ecological sociology studies the complex interdependence between societies and the um, ecosystems from the local to the global. Those who study this subdiscipline designate themselves as human ecologists and or environmental sociologists. Our present concern is to understand the presence of environment ecology as a theme, as a subject, a subdiscipline in sociology. Although the emerging trends indicate an increasing engagement of sociologists with the theme, as compared with many other specializations such as caste and class, family and kinship, which are very common in our field. The presence of environment in sociology is somewhat rickety. I cannot claim as a sociologist that we, the sociologists, have done considerable amount of work in the field of environment. And I have to tell you why it is so. To find an answer, we need to search the contours of sociological traditions. It is usually the founding fathers who lay the foundation for any discipline. And if we look at our founding fathers, I will use two of them as illustrations, you will find that both of them have grossly neglected environment as a theme of study in sociology. As students of sociology, and I hope most of you are, <coughs> familiar with the rules of sociological method by Emily Durkheim, according to this text, the subject matter of sociology is social facts. And they are objective, and Durkheim insisted on the irreducibility of social facts to psychological properties of individuals. So you cannot reduce a social fact to any other, be it psychological or environment, ecology, whatever. So you cannot understand the properties of social facts, the characteristics of social facts, a la some other set of factors. You have to look for an explanation within the canvas of social facts. So a necessary corollary of this was of this sui generis conception of social phenomenon was the dictum that causes of social facts must always be seen in other social facts. So, if there is a, uh, a social fact is to be understood, is to be explained, is cause is to be discovered, you have to look at other social facts, not at psychological facts. If you remember reading Durkheim's suicide, I hope some of you will be reading that. He categorizes suicides mainly into four, and he always tries to tell you why a particular kind of suicide is happening and where the causes lie, always in other social facts and not on the psychological proclivities of those who commit suicide. This anti reductionism taboo also <coughs> legitimated sociological rejection of biological on physical 
factors. And that is the number of the problem. Uh, we never looked at, as sociologists, at physical factors, let's say, let us say environmental or uh, ecological factors, or even in the field of biology, although we are all biological beings. Till the early 20th century, it was common for theorists to offer explanations of social phenomena in terms of biological, geographical, and other physical factors. You might have heard about physiocrats, for example. They explained everything in terms of that. Similarly, there was a phenomenon for quite some time in theory called biological determinism. You have heard about Lombroso, who talked about crime. He always tried to relate it to the biological features of human beings, and particular people who have certain features are prone to commit crime. Theorists often argue that biological factors such as heredity or physical conditions such as climate were the primary determinants of human actions. And these theories were criticized and dismissed as determinists. In fact, determinism was taken to be a taboo in social sciences in general and certainly in sociology. Encouraged by anti-reductionism, Sociologists have been particularly adamant in rejecting these views, often forgetting that they themselves were indulging in another variety of determinism, namely sociological determinism. If you are wanting to explain a phenomenon in, in society, and if you are looking at another phenomenon within the same society or elsewhere, you are also indulging in a kind of determinism. In fact, determinism was always taken to be an abuse. People will say he's a determinist. And with that uh, tendency prevalent, sociologists rejected all the possibility of looking for an explanation, a cause of a social phenomenon outside the social sphere. The combined anti reductionist and anti determinist orientations led to sociologists reaction to two crucial conceptual distinctions among the factors presumed to influence human affairs. Why is it that we humans behave in a particular way in particular circumstances? The first of these related to the question which are the factors, heredity, that's biological factors, and environment are sources of variation in human behavior patterns. Once again, anti-reductionist tab and the negative attitude to biological determinism encouraged sociologists to reject biological in favor of environmental explanations at one point in time. The debate, heredity versus environment, has become very common. When I was an MS student, I remember we had a paper, Biological Basis of Human Society, and I'm sure you will not have. No university should be now teaching such a course. Because we thought we who are involved in, bothered about society has nothing to do with biology. But we had such a paper, and I remember the legendary <coughs> Idamadi Karmi was our teacher. It was very interesting to remember those things. It had, this paper itself was divided into two or three. One such was heredity, and we have been taught something about uh, mental and his uh, <coughs> theory of inheritance, etc. But now, your syllabus will not have any such thing. But environment itself was not unitary. When we talk about environment, it is not a unitary or unified phenomenon. And it came to be differentiated between